Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Why the Philippines changed perspective? Um, I talked to a guy a couple of days ago about this. Well, he actually brought it up because um, he'd been to Portugal and he bumped into a guy that was married to a Filipina. Um, and the guy basically advised him to move move to the Philippines, mar marry somebody from the Philippines. Um, and he did, um, which is why we're now friends, because they're in Spain as well. The reality is, in the West, we're messed up. We really are. Um, I'll give you an example. Tunisia. Um, there's been 30 Brits killed at least, plus a load of other tourists. Um, and our Prime Minister comes out with this gem of uh, support and information. He goes to the media um, for the BBC to stop saying ISIS because Muslims find it offensive. Um, this is the day after this attack. And that's the UK for you, right? And the West has pretty much got this stupidity everywhere. We're more worried about uh, minor things than focusing on problems. Um, it's like when I say, uh, here, here's a very good example. Uh, Filipino women aren't as heavily westernized. Um, their perspective and stuff is, to look after the house, look after the family, uh, the guy is the breadwinner, look after the husband. And instantly in the West, you get the reaction, oh, you're sexist. Um, no, I'm actually not sexist at all. That m model of a family unit is a family unit. Um, that family unit has existed for over 2000 years. So it's only in the last 60 years people have started to destroy it um which is why you've got splintered people everywhere selfishness is everywhere because people are no longer a family unit they're individuals individuals don't care about the stuff around them so that's that's the splintered family unit has come from that because it's all feminism argument they who shout the loudest gets heard first it's all that nonsense and I'm tired of it and for most guys they're tired of it and it's not being sexist it's just quite simply this doesn't make any sense um, and it goes all the way through from the wife getting the car getting the house getting the kids etc and you getting the bill um, I didn't have that scenario by the way but that is the way the legal system is set up. So where is the equality? Philippines, what you have if you marry a woman from the Philippines, um, before they're westernized, because a lot of women end up westernized, which is well, I made that very clear, is they will function as a family unit. They want kids, they want to look after the house, they want to have to look after the, um, look after you and pretty much you deal with the bringing in the money, they deal with everything else. Why is that such a bad model? Because the first thing I would say is they're happy, right? They function better like that um, as a person. Because in the West, how many unhappy people do you know? Because it's all to do with splintering, because they have no uh, role in life anymore. Because we're not fighting any wars at the moment, not not on a large scale anyway. Um, so you have a lot of single guys that have no role model, they have no role in life. Um, but a family unit creates the smallest role um, that you can work from, which is to be the breadwinner. Philippines, it still functions. Um, not in all relationships inside the Philippines, I'm not going to say that because drinking, gambling and stuff is a completely different subject. Um, but from a, from a guy point of view, Philippine women, if you look after the majority of women, they will look after you. Um, and that's this is where this guy got the perspective thing because he met, met a woman, married, living in Spain. Um, and the perspective changed for him because what happens is you go through trundling through life because it's like myself 
before I met April, I was actually, I'd come out of an 11 year relationship. Um, financially, I was doing okay. Um, work wise, I had a cushy job and I was in the process of getting a flat in London and looking at buying a Porsche. Um, all that changed when I met April because <laughs> we decided to get married and all that money I took out to the Philippines and we lived off that for our initial time in the Philippines plus paid for the wedding. Perspective. From the selfish perspective, car, house, independent, and from my point of view, no woman would ever live in my apartment um, because I did not want them to get access to my rights of ownership. Um, because I'd already come out of a relationship, I'd left everything behind. I just took a, a bag of clothes, etc., and just left everything else. So I wasn't getting into that scenario again. Um, and I think a lot of guys are like that. And it's not just our generation or older generations. Um, I was watching a documentary on uh, youth around London. Even these guys that are like 17 years old have no interest in marriage. They have no interest in getting women pregnant or stuff because they know it's a lifelong cash cow for the woman. Don't have to agree with me, but it's a reality. From the guy's point of view, it doesn't matter if the money goes to the state or goes to the woman, it's coming out of your wallet. And their perspective is look after oneself because uh, everybody else is out to get cash out of you. Um, which is where the splintered society is going. So from my point of view, the perspective comes from you go to the Philippines, you meet the person that you fall in love with, get married to, etc. And you gain your direction in life. You gain the focus that says, you'll do whatever it takes to make this family uh, work. You'll make sure there's money on the table, food on the table, kids have got education, etc., etc., etc. Because you have a woman that is turned around and 110% behind you in whatever you do. She supports you, loves you, takes care of you, takes you care of the kids and gives you all the tools in life um, so that you can provide for the family. And that's where the perspective comes from which means you also become more focused because in the West, how many people are struggling with finances? So the average dinner table conversation in the UK and argument is not about whether they love each other or not, or whether somebody's having an affair. It's about cash. Now, if, if only one person is responsible for bringing the money in the house, there's nothing to argue about. And the other thing is, you will find good women in the Philippines will adapt to whatever scenario. Why? Because they're used to having nothing. They're not after Prada. They're not after, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Choo Shoes or whatever. They're after a house. They're after the family life. They're after the uh, being content with the uh, basics in life, which is what life's about. I'm not being funny. If most of the guys I met um, over the years had actually met Filipino women earlier, I'm sure they'd have been much happier now, but also they would still be in marriages, they would, um, wouldn't have so much debt, etc., etc., because they function better as a, not, um, as a family unit. It's like you say, you know, Chinese, for example, Chinese function as a family unit. Um, you find most Asians, uh, whatever country they're coming from will function as a group because they function as a family. It's the, the initial family, then the extended family, etc., etc. But the, the whole point is they work as a group. Um, and like I say, if you're the breadwinner, that's your role. Your wife's role is to be the best housewife, best wife, uh, best mother, etc., etc. And they take that role very seriously. That's why I know when people do stupid things like um, go and have an affair with a bar girl or something, I, I'm sat there thinking, you're not so idiot. Um, because A, nobody told you to get married. But B, you're not taking the relationship as serious as your partner is. Um, 
because the whole point is that in marriage for me because I had no intention to get married I don't have a religion um, marriage for me is a contract it's an obligation so marriage to me when I sign an agreement it's a commitment for the next lifetime <laughs> um, there is no going back there is no divorce etc because that is not in our um, vocabulary there's no uh, oh well I'm not happy I'll just change something you know change my wife we don't work like that marriage is marriage that's it if we weren't sure we wouldn't have got married that was it and the same my wife's got the same perspective and I sat down and said to her we, we do this um, it, I will commit a hundred percent but I expect the same because I would never divorce you know it would be a real battle to get me to sign any paperwork because I would refuse to divorce um, and my wife's got the same commitment that I have and I think if people looked at marriage more that way that if you sign for it that's it you know there's no going back um, I think if more people did that then a you may have less marriages but b any of the marriages that actually existed would be extremely strong because the commitments there um, but I I would struggle to have that same commitment and relationship in the West and it's not because I can't find women or whatever because you'll feel, hear a lot of negative people are, oh you can't find you, these guys go to the West, Asia because they can't find husbands and blah and wives blah blah utter nonsense because every guy I've met has been either in a relationship or been married or just went to the east um, to do uh, do something different it's been nothing about a oh I couldn't find a woman in the west so I come all the way to the east I haven't met a guy like that yet <clears throat> what I've met is guys that say I'm tired of women in the west that's a completely different thing um, because like I said the westernization is often uh, splintered in the west so um, it's like going to a bad restaurant if the food's bad every time you go in why would you keep eating there um, and it's not a sexist thing it's just that from my point of view if I've got a country that has fantastic women that are, aren't corrupted by this obsession of consumerism etc or I've got this one where the majority of women are obsessed with uh, I've got a right I've got um, got credit cards I've got debt I got this I got that I I I I which one are you going to Can I tell you now I'll go to Asia every time um, I can't sell it uh, any better than that because quite simply unless you do it you wouldn't understand it um, which is why anyway it's critical it I'll just say go to Asia to understand it if you can't don't don't sit there whining going oh but Western women this one you don't understand it you don't understand it um, because it's very cut and dry once you're there um, you can understand the the complete change um, because I think value uh, family values and uh, marriage has been devalued in the West considerably same as morals and everything else it's all gone down the toilet we're, we're more interested in driving people down in the media and stuff than picking anybody up our TV shows or reality TV shows they're not focused on education learning something developing your knowledge politics or anything that is focusing in a positive development of mankind it's all about being negative now I'm not running the West down in that way because I'm running them down. I'm saying it because it's true. Um, as such, that's why I say go to Asia. Now, TV is abysmal in some of these countries, um, but at the same time, I'm not there for the TV. All right, thanks for watching.